Before getting on with the video, I just want to say a few words about how shitty the customs and postal services are around here. You probably know, as I mentioned before, that for each one of these uh, small packages coming from outside the uh, European Union, I have to go pick it up myself from this uh, special postal office with a customs office and I have to open each package so they check the contents. Also, if the value is over 10 euros, I have to pay the uh, value added tax. The thing is, imagine a single postal office like that for a city of 300k people where tens of thousands of packages were, are arriving from China because people order a lot from eBay and AliExpress as well as other websites. So you get these massive waiting times before they actually process your package and then massive waiting lines at the postal office. It's crazy the way they do things around here. So that's why I have these long waiting times before getting my items. For example, right now I am waiting for an USB microscope and more of those uh, Bossman fuses which were ordered a month ago because I want to investigate that issue further. But anyway, I have to wait uh, longer to get those. So enough ranting, let's start with our first item which is this so-called side glow optical fiber. And by the way, if you hear some background noise, there is some uh, construction works going on uh, outside my building right now. And there's nothing I can do about that. So this thing, uh, side glow optical fiber, five millimeters thick, one meter in length. Of course, this isn't a true fiber optic, but a soft plastic with some uh, properties that allow the light to travel it but also to escape through its circumference. You can get these in various other sizes as well. This kind of tube could be great for some lighting, designing some unique interior lights uh, or interior decoration projects. You know how everyone has lamps on their bedside furniture. I had this idea that it would be nice to have this kind of tube running around the room at the base of the walls or even just around the bed. At one end I could have one of those RGBW LEDs for creating different colors or uh, even warm uh, white LED with adjustable brightness. I think it would be pretty interesting to have the light coming from the floor and shining on the walls. So that's why I uh, got it to try and see how it works. And uh, I have this blue LED into the frame right now. Let me turn off all the lights in here. I'm gonna shine the LED on the side of the fiber and it's not impressive at all. Like you get some light shining through the walls of this fiber but just for a short portion of it where the light enters the fiber and towards the end you barely get any light escaping the walls of the fiber but it does pass the light through the end of the fiber like any optical fiber would do. So it's not as great as what I was expecting. In fact, it's pretty shitty to say so. This thing would not uh, work with my idea. It would not let enough light escape through the walls of the fiber so that it will illuminate the room. So I'm either not getting the uh, good quality stuff or it's just false advertising because if you check their pictures on, on eBay, there is much more light uh, coming through the walls of this uh, this thing. Not sure what could be done about that. So I can see that bending it at different angles does change the, the amount of light that uh, comes out, but I don't like the way uh, it looks. It's barely enough light for my uh, application. So I think I will keep this and maybe use it as a light pipe or a project box or something like that to pass the light from an LED to the front panel. But as a side glow optical fiber, I don't think it does the job. Next, just to check them out, I ordered a set of these C5W car bulbs with LEDs. These are supposed to be canvas compatible, which actually means they have a resistor in there that will burn away energy to simulate a higher load like an incandescent bulb would do. This way you avoid the bulb out error on your dashboard. 
However, I tested these and you would not believe the temperature they reached during my experiment. I left them running at 12 volts input, uh, 28 degrees Celsius ambient in free air right here on my bench. And after about 15 minutes, they reached 100 degrees Celsius on the surface of the LEDs. Fumes started uh, rising from the board. Probably the flux residue was being burned by the scorching temperature. Also, they started dimming after only 15 minutes. I mean, it was visible and they weren't as bright as when I started the test. So be careful when installing these kind of uh, bulbs in your car. I would imagine it will at least melt the plastic socket holding it. Let's try to remove one of these uh, heat sinks and see what kind of resistor they have in there. It's probably glued shut. So this is how the panel looks like. Uh, they have this 100 ohm resistor in parallel with the um, bulb contacts so the positive and negative coming from the 12 volt battery and they have also this 47 ohm resistor in series with the LEDs so this thing uh, will gather heat from the 5050 SMD LEDs as well as from these resistors uh, dissipating um, the uh, voltage drop that occurs on them so they will get extremely hot I'm not sure how you could get higher quality ones because this is the form factor it's pretty small and they need to burn that energy to trick the system to think there is a load on that channel so there isn't any way of dissipating 2 or 3 watts with such a small package my next item is pretty interesting for those into testing batteries. It's a four terminal battery testing socket. You would use something like this when you want to get accurate results for a battery discharge curve for example. Having this kind of uh, four wire socket will get you accurate voltage measurements because it uses separate sense wires for measuring voltage and separate high current path for the actual discharge. This one is made out of PCB panels and looks like an acrylic uh, sheet in between and it uses these um, spring-loaded uh, contacts on the socket itself. The way uh, it works is the small spring-loaded pin makes contact with the um, battery tabs and is used for the voltage measurement while the thicker outer pin uh, also makes contact with the battery uh, tabs but it is used for the high current path actually discharging the current and these two pins are isolated from each other um, it seems that from, for the positive end the signal uh, goes through the PCB through some tracks and comes up here on the connector while for this uh, mobile part it goes through wires unfortunately it's not spring loaded it just has these uh, screw clamps that you need to loosen to be able to slide this uh, thing around and then when you're in position you would uh, close these uh, screws to lock it down I'm sure there are other sockets out there which are nicer by construction maybe they are spring loaded or made out of better materials for easier loading of the batteries but I'm pretty sure they're quite expensive this one was just ten dollars with free shipping and uh, I think it will do the job. I will add links in the description for you to find it. My next item is an ESP32 development board, more precisely an ESP Lowlin32. We've had one of these uh, boards on the channel before but it was based on the ESP8266EX. This one is based on the ESP32 which is the newer chip from Espressif. Everyone should know the ESP32 by now. It's pretty cool, it's powerful, it's, it's dual core and comes loaded with all the peripherals you could think of plus Bluetooth, LE and Wi-Fi. These kind of boards allow you to get started uh, pretty quickly developing because you have your um, USB connection with the USB to serial uh, conversion done on board so you don't have to worry about that and this one also supports a lithium, lithium battery through this um, 2-pin JST connector. It can be powered from the battery and it can charge the battery through the USB port at 500 milliamps maximum. So it's a slight variation from the uh, standard development board but I think it, it's pretty useful for a lot of people. 
My next item is the VL53L0X sensor breakout module. As you can see, it's very, very small. This sensor is manufactured by ST Micro, and I have right here the first page of its uh, data sheet because I think it's always uh, interesting to read at least the first page of the uh, data sheet when you discover something new. We can see it's a time of flight ranging and gesture detection sensor. It's uh, laser based and uh, works on 940 nanometers. The nice thing is that all the measuring circuitry is integrated inside the sensor and you get a nice square C interface where you can get the data. The measuring range is up to 2 meters but I could not find the uh, resolution mentioned here in the data sheet. I did find the, some info about the accuracy and is at best 3%. It could go worse in less optimal conditions. So this is like the next level sharp IR distance sensor, except it is much smaller and cheaper. If you remember those, they did the job but weren't so great in terms of uh, performance or immunity to outside noise. It looks like this uh, small PCB also contains local voltage regulation and uh, I believe some voltage uh, level translation. So if you're interested in doing some distance measuring, you might want to check out this uh, sensor. I'll leave a link in the description below. Next up, I got myself a set of these uh, router bits for my rotary tool. This should be pretty useful. Um, when you need to route some shapes into a front panel, for example, uh, metallic or plastic, this should do the job just fine with the rotary tool. You get various uh, shapes inside here. Uh, I'm sure there are other kits with other sizes and shapes as well. This one uh, should work pretty well for the things I needed to. About the quality, I don't know, but judging from the price, I don't expect these to last me a lifetime. And that's okay really, because I use them occasionally for small jobs, and when these will run out, I can always get a new set. The cost was uh, $4, with free shipping from Banggood, and a link will be added in the description below for you to find these. My next item is a small development board for the ATtiny167 microcontroller. I purchased this uh, a few months back uh, and I think the main reason was because it's compact and it's from the from that series Digi DigiSpark development boards uh, that we've seen before right here in the mailbags and you can load firmware through USB even though the microcontroller doesn't have a hardware USB interface there is a firmware with uh, software USB implemented in that uh, uh, series. The other ones I have are based on the Tiny85 microcontroller, but the Tiny167 is newer and has some added functionality like a higher number of pins. I always keep a selection of small development boards like these around because whenever I need a small automation circuit, I will bodge one of these development boards inside the product uh, to do the job. So for me, it's a cheap and easy way for hacking stuff. One of these was around $3.00 and a link will be provided in the description if you would like to check it out. My next item is a set of pin extracting tools. These are very inexpensive, around $4 for this set, but it can save you a lot of uh, wasted time. With these, you can extract pretty much any pin found, and this is particularly useful for those uh, working on automotive uh, wiring, because they're when you need to do a repair or add a new wire, you might need to extract a pin or two from a connector. Usually those pins uh, have pieces of folded metal that retain the clip inside the connector. And by inserting one of these pins, you fold that small piece of metal and you can release the pin. Unfortunately, the metal used on these is not that um, great. Uh, I'm seeing some signs of rust appearing on them, maybe on the edges, but still, even so, they will do the job and I highly recommend you get yourself a set of these. You never know when you're going to need them and you don't want to start poking around with your tweezers, uh, bending those in the process. My next item is a dummy load. 
which has a bunch of features and a bit of rust. It seems that it has a bit of rust on this uh, gold plated uh, USB connector. Yeah, so uh, I was thinking gold isn't supposed to rust, but there you have it. This gold connector has some rust present right from the factory. It's made by ZKE, which uh, made make other dummy loads and USB monitors as well. So this load is oriented at testing USB power banks and USB devices. As you can see, it has just this uh, input and uh, output USB uh, connector for testing. It's limited to just 35 watts and 21 volts, but that's enough for testing uh, up to quick charge uh, 3.0 devices. It comes with a nice software that will allow you to plot the measurements. I won't go into too much details about the load because Andres has already reviewed this load on his channel. So I will just place a link to his video in the description so you can check it out. And our last item for today's video are these um, automotive uh, blade fuse holders. These will allow you to connect the mini automotive uh, blade fuses in your circuit. Not sure about the size of those, but they should be around 10 millimeters wide. It looks like the fuse would be fairly water resistant, or should I say splash resistant in here with this uh, rubber cap. And the whole fuse holder seems to be molded over the wire, so it should be fairly splash resistant. You would of course uh, cut this wire and insert this in series with your circuit. You don't want to be installing it like this. It will do uh, you no good, it won't assure any protection at, at all if you install it like this. But I must say I felt tempted to install it like this when I saw they were building them, uh, they were shipping them like this. But it's, it's part of their manufacturing process. This cable is probably just a short piece of cable with two uh, cable crimps or connectors on the end, which are actually these guys inside here and then once they uh, bring those two together they mold this uh, rubbery plastic thing over the connectors and they don't bother to cut the wires before uh, shipping them out the factory. You don't necessarily need to use these in automotive circuits you can use them anywhere you need a fuse because they're cheap and convenient to use but you do need to be careful not to exceed the ratings especially the voltage rating because these automotive blade fuses are usually rated for lowish voltages like 24 or 48 volts. So please keep an eye on that. This was all for today. I hope you enjoyed seeing all of these items which I got from China. As usual there will be links in the description below. And don't forget that hitting the like button helps the channel grow and supports me continuing with this activity. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.